So in continuing with angle sum of a triangle, the more difficult questions require you to draw on your knowledge of these angles here. So you will need to draw on this in order to solve some of the missing angles in these triangles. So looking closely at this question here, I can see I've got to find the value of x. I've give, been given 47 degrees. I've got nothing here and I've got an angle on the outside. So looking closely, I can't look at the triangle until I solve this section here. And this section is actually a supplementary angle. So supplementary angles add up to 180 degrees. So in order to solve x, I have to start here with the supplementary angle. So x equals 180 degrees minus what I know here, 110 degrees. And that is going to equal 70 degrees. So now I've found this missing angle of 70 degrees. And I have to find that in order to find or solve x. So now I can move on and focus on to the triangle here. So x degrees equals, so 180 degrees, which is the angle sum of a triangle, minus the information that I know, which is 47 degrees plus 70 degrees drop down to the next line, 180 degrees minus, now I have to add this up and this comes to 117 degrees, move down to the bottom line and let's solve, 180 minus 117 is 63 degrees, so now I have just solved the value of x. In this video we are going to focus on angle sum of a triangle. The three interior angles of a triangle always add up to 180 degrees, no matter the shape or type of triangle. So taking a look at each of these three questions that we're going to look at shortly, all of the angles in those triangles will all add up to 180 degrees, no matter the difference between the three of them, the internal angle sum of a triangle will always be 180. So to figure out how to calculate the missing angles as indicated as an X pronumeral in these three examples and also this Y one here, we need to take some steps to calculate this. So we know that there's 180 degrees for the entire triangle. So if we can look at the clues given to us in those angles with measurements, add those up and subtract them from 180, we can find the missing angle. So let's take a look at the first one. X degrees equals, so we put X degrees equals because that's the pronoun we're trying to figure out. And we go 180 degrees minus, now I've been given information here, 80 degrees and 45 degrees. So we open up a bracket and we put 80 plus 45 degrees and close the bracket. And so we follow our normal order of operations. We work down the page equals sign 180 degrees minus so we don't do anything here we've got to work the brackets first because brackets come first in order of operations and so we have to add 80 and 45 and we get 125 degrees and now we can solve the missing angle 180 minus 125 equals 55 degrees now that we know we've got the missing angle, if we were to add 55, 80 and 45 all up together, we would get 180. And we have to write the type of angle that we're dealing with here. So this is an angle sum of a triangle. We can actually just put the, draw the triangle, it's not a very good triangle there, but you know what I'm talking about. Okay. So that's our rule, angle sum of a triangle. So every time you find a missing angle, um, no matter what kind of you know, quadrilateral triangle, all the parallel line stuff that we're doing, you, know, you have to tell the uh, you know, teacher or the exam or the assignment what angle it is and what, how you figured it out. Let's do the second one now, fixing up my triangle. Okay, so the next one again is an X degrees equals we know the angle sum of a triangle is 180 degrees and we're going to subtract what we know. 
Now, what we know is there's a 40 degrees and this little box here is a 90 degrees because that's a right angle. So we're going to add 90 degrees and 40 degrees together and subtract those from 180. So we drop down the x equals 180 minus and if we add this together, we get 130 degrees. And now we keep walking down. We're going to solve now. 180 minus 130 degrees is 50 degrees. And again, you would write angle sum of a triangle down here at the bottom. And the last one on the right hand side here, we've got a couple that we need to figure out. Now we've had a scalene triangle, we've had a right angle triangle, and now we have a particular triangle called an isosceles triangle. And I know it's isosceles because this side is equal to this side, and this angle is equal to this angle. So for the first one y degrees, I know if this is an isosceles triangle, that's equal to that. So y degrees equals the same. So y degrees equals 70. So this here is 70 based on isosceles triangle rules. Now I can solve x because I have the two other angles given to me. If I don't have this angle here, I can't solve this. So that's why I had to solve y first. Now we can go down to x. So x equals, and now we're going to continue with the angle sum of a triangle. So we've got a 70 and a 70, so that goes in the brackets. And we keep going down the page, 180 minus the sum of those, which is 140 degrees. And now we solve 180 minus 140 degrees is 40 degrees. So that missing angle there is 40 degrees. And of course, I would write angle sum of a triangle at the bottom. In continuing with angle sum of a triangle, we're going to look at more complex questions now. You must have knowledge of angles. Corresponding, co-interior, supplementary, vertically opposite. You need that information now in order to solve these missing angles. So let's look at the first triangle here. We have an unknown of x that we must solve. We've been given 100 degrees. We're missing an angle and we need a second angle to solve x. But we've got another bit of information on the outside here of 30 degrees. So I need to figure out this missing angle here in order to solve x. This is a vertically opposite angle. This angle is equal to this one. So I can place in the 30 degrees. So when I'm writing things down with regards to the angles I'm using, I only need to write those down for the ones that I'm trying to solve. So at this point, this 30 degrees here does not need an explanation. It's information I need to solve x. So now we can solve x. x degrees equals 180 minus brackets, the sum of the other two that I know, which is 100 degrees plus 30 degrees. x degrees equals 180 degrees minus the sum of these two angles here, which is 130 degrees x degrees equals 180 minus 130 is 50 degrees. Now it's essential that you use the degree symbol through all of these questions. If you miss this off in an exam, you will lose marks. Let's take a look at the second diagram here. We've been asked to solve x. Again, we've been given 70 degrees inside the triangle an unknown to find and a missing angle over here. I need this one in order to solve this x. So if I look really, really closely, I can actually see a z shape here. And that's an alternate angle. So this one here is equal to this one here. So that means that this angle is 35 degrees. So now I have two angles to help me solve x x equals 180 degrees minus brackets, okay, 35 and 70. So 35 plus 70 degrees, close the brackets. x degrees equals 180 minus, now I have to add these two up, 35 plus 70 equals 105. 
drop down to the next line for solving. 180 minus 105 is 75 degrees. So the value of x is 75 degrees. Moving on to the last diagram here. It's quite complex. We've got x, y and z to solve. We've got to figure out this one here, this one here and this one here. And there's lots and lots of clues in there for us to use. So first thing I'm going to do is solve uh, the value of x because I have a 90 degree angle here, a 60 degrees and an unknown here for x. So straight away we are just going to solve the internal angle sum of a triangle. So we go 180 degrees minus and now we're going to put the 90 degrees plus the 60 degrees, the information we've been given. And we're going to add that. 90 and 60 equals 150. We're now going to subtract that to get our value of x. So 180 minus 150 is 30 degrees. So now I know that that angle there is 30 degrees. So now I can solve y. y degrees equals, so you can see that y is over here and we've got this situation which is an upside down flipped looking supplementary angles. So supplementary angles equal 180 degrees and I have 30 degrees, 25 degrees, so now I can figure out the unknown of y. So we go 180 degrees minus what I know, which is 30 and 25, so I must add those up. 180 degrees minus the sum of these two angles, which is 55. And y degrees equals, now I subtract, 180 minus 55 is 125. So this angle up here, is 125 degrees. Now we move on to solving Z. Z is our last port of call here. So there's a couple of ways we could solve this but you always need to look at the easiest way to do this and that is one with less calculations. So looking closely we have a parallel line and another parallel line here and a transversal cutting through. So if we look at solving Z we can look at this Z shape funny enough. Okay. This is an alternate angle. So we know that this angle is equal in size to that angle. So Z degrees equals 30 degrees. If we didn't have this information up here, we could solve using supplementary angles down here. That means this straight line is worth 180 degrees. We've got two pieces of information. We would add those up, take them off 180, and it would give us Z. But always try for the easiest option. Now, what we've got here is an angle sum of a triangle for x, we have a supplementary angle for y, and we have an alternate angle for z. You would normally need to be putting down the rules or the types of angles that you use to solve these. So you would write angle sum of a triangle, supplementary angles, and alternate angles. It is very, very important that you do that for each of these types of questions.